15 and how from childhood you have been acquainted with the sacred writings which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus and in that statement Paul is alluding to um, the subject matter of scripture what is scripture about it's about God bringing salvation to you through Jesus Christ through faith in Jesus Christ that's what the Bible is about it's able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Jesus Christ there's your summary statement of what what the Bible is about if someone asks you it's God's wisdom for salvation through faith in Jesus Christ that's what the Bible is um, God's wisdom uh, for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus and so that becomes the you know the subject matter if someone comes to you whether it's a Mormon or whether it's a Jehovah Witness or Seventh-day Adventist um, you ask them what is the central message of Scripture this is a central message God's wisdom scripture is God's wisdom for salvation through faith in Jesus Christ um, now I want to move to uh, number three God's gift of his son um, this is the second page and uh, the, the here again second Timothy 2 salvation through faith in Christ Jesus uh, there's something Jesus is very Jesus is central to the peace of salvation there is no salvation apart from Christ or outside of Christ it just doesn't happen it can't happen um, and so this is one of the the light bulbs that should go off in your head if you ever get encountered by a cult is what do they think about Jesus Christ you remember in Matthew 16 what did Jesus ask his disciples someone should know that passage Matthew 16 remember Jesus said who do people say that I am or the son of man is right some said some Elijah some Jeremiah one of the prophets and then Peter blurts out as he always does you are the Christ the son of the living God and um, and and what was Jesus's response to Peter when he said you are the Christ the son of the living God say it loudly please okay please keep reading yeah Okay, that, that, thank you. That, that's good. Thank you very much. Um, he says, uh, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona. Flesh and blood did not reveal this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. Um, so the only way um, you can know Jesus is if the Father gives you revelation. Does everybody agree with that? Um, now, if someone would turn to Matthew chapter 11... And please read uh, verse 25 through 27. Matthew 11, 25 through 27. Thank you. And see, there, there Jesus is saying that the only way you can know the Son, that he's the true article, that he's the real deal, is the Father has to reveal that to you. There's no way anybody can know that Jesus is the true Messiah unless God the Father actually shows them that that's true. Everybody sees that clearly? And, and Jesus goes on to say that the only way you can know God the Father is if the Son chooses to reveal the Father to you. 
So there is no knowledge of God apart from Jesus Christ. Um, and so, does everybody see that? There's no, you cannot know God as your father apart from Jesus Christ. Right? Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Jesus is the door. He's the only way to God. Um, apart from him, outside of Jesus, there is no salvation whatsoever. Uh, Jesus is God's uh, mediator. Uh, there's, when God created the world, he did it through Jesus. When God redeems the world, he does it through Jesus. When God brings the world to an end, he brings it through Jesus. Everything God always brings through Jesus by the power of the Spirit. That's always the chain of command or the way God does things. Is that everybody's cool on that? Okay. All right. Now, I, um, I want to... I want to um, kind of amplify this point a little bit. Uh, Proverbs chapter 1. Proverbs chapter 1. If you just turn there. Um, Proverbs 1, verse 7, if someone would read that. Please read it loudly. Cool. Very good. Uh, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. The fear of the Lord is, is kind of talking about these things here. Faith and repentance. Uh, the Bible says the fear of the Lord is to hate sin. Um, and uh, so what, what Solomon is saying here is that there's only way you can begin to have true knowledge is, is by fearing the Lord first. And so when you're, because a lot of you are going away to college or in college or even in high school, and you probably have come across what is commonly known as relativistic thinking. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? Relativistic thinking. There's no absolutes. No one can really know anything for sure. Um, how can you, who, who made you the judge? Have you ever come across this type of thinking if you're witnessing to someone and says what makes you think you're right? Right? Um, if someone says to you there's no absolutes what do you say to them that's an absolute statement right and so it's very good does everybody hear that if someone says there's no absolutes that is an absolute um, you can't be certain of anything except that you can't be certain of anything it doesn't make any sense um, and so um, if you have, with respect to biblical authority, for example, if you use, because what's very common today is let's, let's not use the Bible, let's go outside of the Bible and prove from an external source that the Bible is actually true. That's very common today. But tell me what, someone tell me what is wrong with that. What's wrong with that approach to things? Because it seems like it would be good. You know, we have archaeology, we have science, we can use all these things to verify the Bible, but what's wrong with that approach? Harry. No faith. It's, it's, it's without faith. That's one of the big problems with it. There's no faith at all. What else, Elaine? Yes, okay. Uh, no, no. But I'm saying that if in the future, if their evidence, cha if the evidence changes, if their faith is rested on evidence, there's something shaky about that. Because, like, if somebody can take me to Mount Ararat and show me a boat, a wooden boat under the ice, and say this was Noah's Ark, see, this proves the Bible. 
But what if someone 100 years from then sh shows that it's really not, you know, Noah's Ark and they see a big sign on it that says made in China, you know? And so what, what happens to your faith at that point? You know, because if you, um, someone put it this way, if something, if something is used to prove the ultimate authority, it then becomes the ultimate authority, right? If you have the Bible and you use something else to prove the Bible, then that is the ultimate authority, not the Bible. And so God doesn't need, God is, if, if God is true and God is true, he's the ultimate authority. So if he's the ultimate authority, he alone proves himself. Um, and so what, part of what this goes back to is that when Jesus says something, that, you know, I'm going to be crucified and be spit on and treat it like, you know, a criminal. And, but on the third day, I'm coming back to life again. And he actually does that. He's self-authenticating. You know what I'm saying? And then when you hear the message about God's grace and you believe in that message by the power of the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, the Bible says in Romans 8, he bears witness with your spirit that you are a child of God. And so God authenticates himself. He doesn't need external data to authenticate um, him. Evidences are very good for believers. If you already believe these things can support your faith and it's good, it, you know, it, it adds reason and rationality to your faith. But if your faith is built on evidence alone, the evidence can, science changes every year. You know, they, they develop new things, they discover new things that change the textbooks. You know, and so if, if my faith is rooted in evidence, then my faith is very shaky. Um, the fear, in Proverbs 1, 7, it says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but it's fools who despise wisdom and instruction. Um, so in order to have true knowledge on any, anything, really, repentance and faith is required um, Repentance and faith in Jesus Christ is required to know anything truly. Now I want to, I want to just um, back to the gift of the scriptures on the front page at the bottom. Uh, I want to just say something about this um, in relation to um, the last point actually, the gift of the Holy Spirit, because these things are related. Um, sometimes, sometimes you will hear in Christian circles, um, um, you'll hear the phrase, listen for the Spirit or listen to the Spirit, um, which can, you know, I'm not going to, um, you know, if, that, if that's for me, tell them I'm busy. Um, I'm just joking. Uh, but, you know, sometimes you'll hear, listen for the Spirit or listen to the Spirit, um, listen to what God is saying to you in your heart and you, you have to be careful with that line of thinking because the heart of man is desperately wicked deceitful above all things who can know it and everything I hear has to be subject to the Bible remember remember we looked at a passage in 2nd Peter um, the 2nd Peter passage uh, Peter says that he was on the holy mountain and he saw Jesus transfigured before his eyes he's an eyewitness of that I mean that's quite a visual aid you know um, he sees Moses and Elijah appear with Jesus and then he's ready to make tabernacles for all three guys and then all of a sudden Moses and Elijah disappear and a cloud envelops them and then he hears out of the cloud this is my beloved son with whom I am well pleased listen to him and so what, what God is saying is that everything that Moses ever said or you know wrote Everything that Elijah ever preached is all summed up in the person of Jesus Christ. It's not saying that Moses and Elijah are irrelevant. It says that what they said is now summed up in the person of Jesus Christ. And so, um, so in some sense, Jesus is central to this equation. Um, and so the Holy Spirit, it says in 2 Peter, is the one who moved men to write the Holy Scriptures. In John 16, it says that the whole purpose of the Spirit coming in relation to this is to glorify the person of Christ. In John 16, 
The Spirit comes not to, not to testify about himself, but to testify about Christ. He comes to glorify Christ and point the finger at Christ. Just like John the Baptist, who was full of the Spirit from his mother's boat, he says, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. I must decrease, but he must increase. That's the mind of the Spirit. He leads us to that, uh, to that end. And um, when you think about this, uh, Peter says, in light of all of this, he says, we had the greatest visual aid you can find. We saw Jesus transformed before our eyes, and we heard God the Father speak out of heaven. And then he says, but we have a more sure word than that. We have the scripture. The scripture is more sure than that visual aid that Peter got on the mountain. Because anybody in this room can come here tomorrow and say, I got a vision from God yesterday. An angel came into my bedroom last night and told me these things. You know, this is what Joseph Smith said. Gabriel came and told me this, and he gave me the Book of Mormon. This is what Muhammad claimed, that an angel came and gave him uh, the Quran. You know, and, and the argument from the Muslim is Muhammad couldn't read or write. And so how could he write this unless it was by divine or supernatural means? And so the Jehovah Witnesses say the same thing. We've got a, you know, Walter Taze Russell, he says that this is a revelation from God. But, you know, and, and so what do you do with that? You have to go back to the source of authority, the scriptures. Does it line up with the Bible is the bottom line. Uh, because I can tell you the Spirit told me to do something and I could be lying or I could be deceived, you know? And so if, if my heart tells me something and it's not lined up with the Bible, it's, it's not God speaking to me, it's, it's some kind of um, self-deception or demonic deception. Um, and so, so, it is a, so Jesus is a central, uh, and I want a couple of you to read, um, if someone could turn to the book of Colossians, Colossians, uh, if someone reads chapter 1, uh, verse uh, 19, or actually verse 15 through 19, Colossians 1, 15 through uh, 19, and if someone else would read Colossians 2, uh, 1 through 3, and then verse 9. Who is Colossians 1, 15 through 19? Justin. Loudly, please. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, you see there in that passage, it says that, you know, Jesus is the image of the invisible God. We're created in the image of God, but he is the image of God. And so, like you and I are here to represent God, but he's the representation of God. You know, he's the imprint of God. To look in the face of Jesus is to look in the face of God. There's no difference. Remember when, when Philip said, show us the Father and it'll be enough for us? And Jesus' response is, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. You don't need to look any further. God is a spirit. He's invisible. And so Jesus is the one who makes God visible. Um, and then in verse 19, it says, For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell. All the fullness of God was pleased to dwell. In John, in John chapter 3, it says that God gave Jesus the Holy Spirit without limitation. There's no limit. He had the fullness of the Spirit and the fullness of the Godhead dwelling in him. Now, who, who has Colossians 2, 1 to 3, and then verse 9? Anybody can read loudly? Yes, Harry. Mm-hmm. 
Laodicea. Thank you. In, in verse uh, 3, it says that in Christ, all of the treasures of wisdom and all of the treasures of knowledge are hidden in him. All of the treasures of wisdom and knowledge are in Christ Jesus. And um, the whole deity, the fullness of the deity, dwells in him bodily. So, I mean, here's an obvious point. Jesus is God. You know, you don't need to look any further. Not only that, but Jesus, as we saw in Matthew 11, is the only way to get to God. And so, in order for anyone who is an unbeliever to know God, they must come to Jesus. There's no possibility of knowing God truly in a personal way as your Father, apart from coming to him through Christ Jesus. And so even, you know, and so unbelievers do know God through creation and through observations of creation. But to know him in a forgiving sense or in as your father or in a personal relationship, it can't happen apart from Christ Jesus. And so, um, so you, we, you know, when, for example, when you deal with um, whether it's Jehovah Witnesses or whether it's Seventh-day Adventists or...